Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Champions League Challenge on Football Manager 2022 where we are in the second tier of Romania with Stau Bucharest. Now there's been some developments since last episode. We've played quite a few games, um, quite a few cup games as well. We'll get to that in a little bit but we have had a player leave us. So unfortunately Adrian Illy II has been recalled from his loan by his parent club CFR Cluj. They weren't happy with um, the the lack of playing time he was getting and also the fact that when we did play him we'd been playing him out position so he's been recalled we no longer have him we just have good old original Adrian Illy. Now for the games that we played since the last episode and we started off with a game against Unirea Slobotia it was a nil nil draw it was a very dull game um fifth five games without a win after this result and I, I thought it was time for a, a change in tactic after this game. It was a very, like I say, a very boring nil-nil draw. And the tactic that we changed to, we used for the game against Kizik Sereda, we used the tactic that I used in the Inter Milan save in the beta version of the game. So if you've seen that save, you know what tactic that will be. I'll show you the tactic regardless before we head into the first of today's matches. But it worked. We we got a 2-1 victory over Kizik Sereda. Huiban and Buhoescu with the two goals for us. Katezdi had a goal disallowed shortly before scoring a goal which counted for Sixereda, but thankfully Buhoescu finishing the, the, the penalty off that we won in the 56th minute to give us the 2-1 win. Then we found ourselves away from home against Vitarul Pandari Targu Jiu, and it took a long time for a goal to come. You can see we had a goal disallowed in the 77th minute. Huiban, unfortunately, um, that one got taken off him but in second half injury time Kalantaru pulled off a, a stunning finish to give us the victory in this game so you can see Huiban has the ball here on the left hand side he pulls it back to the edge of the box for Kalantaru and he just fires it from the left hand side on the edge of the box into the top right corner of the goal past the keeper and saved our blushes because one thing I've not mentioned before the majority of the games that I've played off camera there has been a news item which says that I am close to being sacked. Now, my board rated me as C- minus at this point, um, so I'm not sure whether how close that is to being sacked with the rating system, but um, yeah, it's been, been slightly concerned about possibly not even getting to the point that I wanted to, to record for this episode, which of course is the, the Astra Jeju League game, but we're here and have not been sacked yet, so... That, that's a positive and we of course picked up the 1-0 victory here. So next up was the Romanian Cup game against Astra Giorgio, our opponents in today's episode and you can see we absolutely dominated them not just on the score sheet but in terms of shots and on target as well. 5-1 was the end result. We had uh, there was a few headers scored the, the last three goals were all headers for us Saharia and Buhoescu with two goals um, but the, the goals from Badea and Donos were, were a little bit better. So I'll show you them. So Buhoescu nods the ball down for Badea. He's on the edge of the box and he just drives a low shot past the goalkeeper to, to give us the lead as it was. And then Claudio Donos picking up what I believe may be his first goal. If not his first, it's one of his first goals for us. Um, Badea plays the Bajanaru to Donos and then he just smashes it from outside of the box past the keeper. And it was a very, very comfortable day for us. They did manage to get a goal back, but we were 3-0 up at that point, And we, as you can see, went on to, to seal the game. We then went back to league football and played against Universitatia Cluj. We beat them 2-1. Uh, Huiban scoring two goals in this one. One of them was a volley and one of them was a header. I think the first one was the volley, which I am going to show you. But you can see before we get into that, um, we dominated again in terms of the number of shots that we're having. Our XG is so much better than the opposition. This tactic really seems to be working well for us at the moment. So Beta played the ball over the top to Huiban, who just lets it fall over his head and first time smashes a volley past the keeper. His other goal was, was just a simple header. We are one of the best performers in the league from um, what I've seen in some a news item that came through at four headed goals this season. We then had Romanian Cup fifth round action against Petrolul Ploiesti. And after going a goal down, we did manage to turn the game around and eventually beat Petrolul by four goals to two. Again, having plenty of shots, brilliant XG and just overall dominating the game, which gave us a sixth round tie against uh, a Romanian top tier team. And that's the game that came next. And we, we were so, 
so unlucky not to get the win. We completely dominated the side who are should be better than us. The sixth in Liga One, the FC Botasani. Um, because I haven't told you that, but we'll, we'll I'll show you the goal that they did score. It was worthy of winning any football match. So here we go. Just wait for him to get the ball. Waiting for Roman to get it. There he is. And what can you say about that? Smashed past the keeper right in the top corner of the goal. Despite our domination, there's nothing anyone could do about that. And unfortunately, we've been knocked out of the Romanian Cup. But we have reached our expectation for that competition. It's just a bit disappointing, the fact that we performed so well against a better side than us and didn't come away with a victory. But still promising signs for the future, given how well we did play against a better side than us. And that leads us into today's two games. So we've got Astra Jerzy, who are still currently rock bottom of the league with that that points deduction that they had at the start of the season really affecting them. I think they're still in negative points. And we'll also be playing against 11th place, Dacia, Unaria, Brayla. I'll show you the league table just quickly. So we are currently fourth. There are, of course, six games left before the league splits into two. And we are currently four points clear in fourth of the, the final relegation. Not Well, yeah, relegation playoff place i guess or rele relegation group stage you know what i mean we're, we're four points off seventh place university here Cluj. so we just need to to stay in the top six and then we can work on pushing higher we're still we were only four points off top of the table as well so still plenty to play for but astro jerju yes they are they've they're already in the the, the playoffs because they're on minus six they've only won one game this season five draws seven defeats, 13 points adrift of 19th place. It was never going to be easy for them. So the tactic that we have decided to go with, I said it was similar to the, the inter tactic that we used in the beta version of the game, but it's, it's a little bit different. So we're, we're playing for set pieces, being more expressive, higher tempo and wide. I think most of them, apart from playing for set pieces, was in the inter tactic. And then in transition, we're going to distribute to the flanks, distribute quickly, counter and counter press, and out of possession, we'll have a higher line of engagement, prevent short goalkeeper distribution as well, but we're going to have a standard defensive line. We're not going to push that defensive line up too high simply because I don't think Wallace and Beta could cope with that at their their age. So the starting lineup for today's first game against Astro Giorgio is standard Raul Balbarau in goal. Darius Orion, the youngster, is in it right back because Claudio Danos, our other under-19 player, needs a bit of a rest, so he's not starting today. He is on the bench. Dean Beta and Wallace at centre-back, a solid central defensive partnership, although Nenad Lalic has been playing there um, a little bit in the games that we played off-camera. George Kalantaru is our left-back today. Then we've got Adrian Popper at right wing. Julian Badea comes in for, still learning the names, Bajanaru, who is also in need of a bit of a rest, partnering alongside Valentin Barbilescu. And then Cosman Atanas, one of our loan signings, is on the left wing. He's done pretty okay in the games off-camera. Then up front, we have Vasil Bohoescu alongside Dragos Huiban. Still, still very unfortunately, Bogdan Chapurlu out, out for another five weeks to three months. So that's going to be, it's, it's going to be a while before he's back with us. So we've, of course, got a 5-1 victory in this fixture in the Cup game. Hopefully we can do something similar today as we have the first opportunity of the game in under a minute of it gone. Barbilescu crosses the ball in. Bohoescu is there. I think the flag has gone up for offside, so that's not going to count. But it's a it's a good start for us. We'll take a look at the, the replay just to see how offside he was. It was actually Barbalescu who was offside, obviously not Buhoescu. So Astro Giorgi with the ball in their own half. Hopefully we can win the ball up high up the pitch here. They play it back to their goalkeeper, who launches that forward straight to our centre-back, and we can launch and attack ourselves. Popper is quite inside there from the right wing where he's playing today, but now he's out wide right. Can he get a ball in from the box, into the box, sorry. Huiban is there with a the header and it's off the bar, I think. Yes, just skimmed off the top of the bar. Barbilescu with a chip ball forward, looking for Huiban, but Bulliger gets there and Moroz can it clear. Hopefully one of our centre-backs wins the ball, he does. Now bihuescu has got it up for run through ball from him to Huiban. Huiban surely he's hit it straight at the keeper, Dragos Huiban. And there's another chance though, 
immediately off the back of that one. Long ball, looking for Huiban. The keeper's come out. Moroz has cleared that, but it's going to fall to our right back, Orion. Now, can he do anything with it? He finds the centre midfielder, Barbilescu, who plays a ball out wide left to Atanas. Atanas with a ball in to Buhuescu, knocks it down for Huiban this time. Andre Gos Huiban with his sixth goal of the season. Excellent assist, assist from Vasil Buhuescu. It was a beautiful ball out wide left originally from Barbilescu to find Atanas. He crossed the ball in to the edge of the box for Buhuescu to knock it down and Huiban to smash it home first time to give us a first half lead away to Astra Jeju. And that would take us back up to third in the table. We had dropped down to fifth because of the results elsewhere, but we would be up in third. Provisionally, just one point off top of the table as Barbilescu has another chance to get an assist. Now Buhuescu's there and it's off the bar and out for a goal kick. I'm happy with how things have gone in the first half, so I've not made any changes at half-time. We do have this highlight immediately after the break, though, as Bobby Lesky tried a long ball looking for Huiban, but it was intercepted by the defender. Talentaru has it at left-back now. Played back to one of our centre-backs, Wallace. Now Huiban's come deep for the ball. Lovely chip pass from him to the centre midfielder, Badea. Badea surely to score, and it's a great save from the goalkeeper, although arguably it, it was shot straight at him. But we've got another corner, another opportunity. Bobby Lesky with the ball in. And Buhuescu is there with a header and it's just nodded wide from him. Corner for Astra Giorgiou now. Grecu with the ball in. Headed away by Atanas. It's going to come back to Astra Giorgiou. It's Bulliger on the edge of the box and he's just put that just over the top of the goal. That's probably the first real, real effort that Astra Giorgiou have had today. And I think we've got a free kick in a dangerous position. Barbilescu to take it. And Barbilescu to get his first goal of the season from a set piece. It's 2 0 now. We're obviously playing for set pieces, and that is because I do know that our centre midfielders seem to be very good at free kicks. And Barbilescu showing exactly how good he is there with that one. And interestingly, Hermannstadt are currently dropping points. They are top of the table, so they're drawing at the minute, which would mean we'd be just two points behind them as a the ball goes into the box, but it's headed away, and Astra Giorgio can come away with it. But we seem to be getting plenty of numbers back in defence. Hopefully we can deal with this uh, counter-attack, which we, we have. We've managed to get everyone back. But the ball over the top is through to Zampia on the right-hand side, and the danger is still there. Popper heads it away, but it's going it's to fall to Reza. And Zamfir with the ball, through ball to Georgia. Georgia with the shot, and it sits straight at the keeper, thankfully. Otherwise, we could have been in a bit of a bit of danger there. Now, all of our players are pretty much are performing admirably today. We we do have a few players that are looking like they're starting to get a bit tired, including both of our strikers and our, our left winger. And we don't have many options on the bench. We're, I think we'll leave the strikers on. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to take Cosmonatinas off. No, I can't. Well, I can, but it would have to be for Claudio Dinos. I think Claudio Dinos can probably play 26 minutes and not be too damaged by it. So we'll bring Claudio on. He's normally been playing at right midfield, but left left midfield today for him. And George Calantaro is looking complacent at left back. We do want to see that. But Adrian Illy is also looking complacent, and he's our, our substitute left back. And then at Lalic, it was telling me to bring him on, but he can't actually play in that position. So we'll, we'll just leave it as the one change for now, I think. And we have another free kick. Barbilescu whips it into the back post. Wallace is there with a the header. It's going to come to Padea. It's shot, but it's blocked. And Huiban with the header, and it's in the side netting. So close to a third for us. We're just about to have another highlight, but Padea has picked up a knock in central midfield. It's a potential lower leg injury, so we're going to have to take him off. Liviu Bajanaru, who was given a rest today, is going to come on. And both players who were given a rest today are now on the field. Confirm that sub and we'll see what happens in this highlight. So Barbilescu with the corner from the right-hand side. Headed away by Builga, but Popper is there. He finds Barbilescu again. Another chance to get a ball in, possibly, for the centre midfielder. Pulls it back to the edge of the box instead. Gets it back from Orion. Now Huban's with the header. It's off the bar. Surely Popper. And Popper scores. Popper scores his first goal of the season. It's the, our third of the game and we are we're running away with it. Away to Astra Giorgiu, the team who have been in desperate trouble since before the season even begun with that 14 points deduction. It was Huiban with the original header off the bar and then Popper with the simplest of finishes. He just had to find a way to get it past the keeper who was lying down on the ground and he managed it. We will proceed with the tactical changes after the goal. Half an hour, no, 20 minutes left to play and we're looking pretty good for it. Wallace I think is looking a bit tired out there. There's another highlight that's happening right now. I want to try and take Wallace off and bring on Nenad Lalic. 
confirm that sub and we'll see what's happening here. So Popper's got the ball in an advanced position, pulls it back to the right back of Ryan. That's a bit into some difficulty for him. It could have been, but Beta, ball forward, Bajanaru off the post. And it's not going to be followed up. I thought he was going to run after that, but Moroz collects it for Astro Giorgio. Another free kick, Bajanaru finds Barbilescu. No, he doesn't. It's cleared by Niagu, but we've got another chance as we have the ball with Popper who's advancing down this right-hand side now. Adrian Popper, he's got one goal already. Can he get an assist? Tries a ball in, it's blocked, and that's headed away by Fatai. Baiku is in, it is tackled by Bajanaru. Buhuescu gets it now to Huiban. Huiban into the box for Claudio Danos, and Claudio Danos has got his second goal of the season. Coming off the bench, the young man who was rested for today's game has scored once again. It was an excellent tackle from Bajanaru to dispossess Baika, found Popper, then Buhuescu to Huiban, through ball from him, and Danos with an excellent finish to make it 4-0. Better with a free kick just inside Astro Giorgio's half, finds Orion, back to Beta. Now Barbilescu, the centre midfielder. Buhuescu to Barbilescu. Now Danos, who's got one already. Nice bit of passing play from us here. Lalic, the substitute centre back, long ball forward, and that's going to be easily collected by the Astro Giorgio goalkeeper Moroz. He launches the ball forward. We should win this. We don't. We let it fall to Fatai, and now it's an opportunity for them to get a goal, and Adeshina Fatai has got rid of our chance of keeping a clean sheet. It's probably, hopefully, just going to be a consolation goal, but it would have been nice to have kept the, the score to zero for Astro Giorgio today. Not to be, though. Niago with the assist. Fatai with a, a nice finish past the keeper, and it's 4-1. And there's the full-time whistle. So a 4-1 victory for us today puts us up to third provisionally, I believe. If you look at look at the shots and this number of shots on target we're having compared to what we were doing when we were playing the Route 1 style of football, this tactic seems to be doing the business for us. And that result provisionally takes us up to third in the table, just one point off top of the table, Hermannstadt. But I did see that Hermannstadt, who I believe started their game a bit later than us, are currently winning 2-0. So we... We will still be four points behind top of the table. But more importantly, this takes us provisionally at least seven points clear of seventh place Universitatia Cluj. But I'll be back in a second with the game against currently 12th Dacia Unirea Braille. They do have a game to play in this game week, so they could jump up to as high as 10th if they manage to win. Now that injury to Julian Bedea, it's not too bad. He's going to be out for between 11 days and two weeks with the a gashed lower leg injury. Our next game um, is in 14 days time. We've got a bit of a, a long break until our next game. So he, he, he might be okay for that one. So here we go. It is time for game two of this episode. 12th place, Dacia Unirea Braila against 4th place, Stau Bucharest. Hermannstadt did win that game that they were playing in the midst of our last game. So they are... Now four points ahead of us, but victory today and we, we just need, well, basically we just need to win. We just need to keep winning to keep piling the pressure on them. Uh, a couple of the teams above us are also playing at the same time as us today. So Concordia, Triagena, they're away at eighth place, FC Brasov, and then top of the table, Hermannstadt are away at two fifth place, Politenica, Timoshawara. So that should be a tough game for them. Hopefully we can do what we need to do. And Julian Badea is, he's passed the fitness test, but I, I, don't think he's going to be really ready to be able to play today after just recovering from that injury. So we'll bring back Liviu Bajanaru into the side. Also, in the gap between last game and this game, I've had two players come to me on exactly the same day saying they're unhappy with the amount of playing time they're getting. One of them was Florin Razdan, who was meant to be a regular starter and came to me asking why he's not been given that role. And I, I just I compromised with him and said, you can be a squad player instead. And he was like, yeah, that's fine. Sweet. Happy to stay with that. Stefan Dragici, on the other hand, was not. He, I tried all the convincing tricks in the book and he just wasn't having any of it. So we eventually agreed that he will be sold. Um, I put an asking price of £150,000. I literally just went to the transfer status and lowered this. I put it to the highest end of his guide value, 200K, and then lowered it until the little pink box that appears said that the player would be happy with that fee. So 150k is what he'd be happy to have his value set as. If someone wants to come in and offer that, more than happy because our finances desperately need that. That wouldn't even take us out of the red. That's how bad things are in the, the finance world of Stau Bucharest. But if no one comes in for him, 
I'm pretty sure everyone's contract is up at the end of the season anyway, so it doesn't really make a difference to me. So just the two changes to the starting eleven from the last game. So Olivia Bajanaro is back in at centre midfield, and then Claudio Denos is back in at right midfield as well. Elsewhere, it's all exactly the same. I did nearly take Darius Orion off for Ayan Mitran, but I think Orion did well last game, so we'll we'll let him let him have another go. So a free kick early on. Bajanaro takes it. He shoots, and it's a good save from Andre. We, of course, in our yellow kit today with white shorts. Barbilescu with the ball at the back post. Weeban with a header. And it's another good effort, but it's just over the bar from him. And a couple of sighters in early here for us. Weeban knocks the ball down. Looking for Bohuescu. I think he got tripped. Surely that's going to be a card. And it's a second yellow card after 12 minutes. Stan Ciolescu has been sent off for Dacia. And this could play into our hands beautifully. It's Atanas with the ball. Wallace now to Barbilescu. Lovely pass to Buhuescu. Surely Buhuescu tries to go around the keeper, ran out of space, and it was good defending in the end from Lungu. Barbilescu with the throw in on this right hand side finds Denos. Now, ooh, our right back lost the ball there, baited as well as the last line of defence though, and now Hiban has it up towards the attacking end of the field. Beta. Back to Barbilescu, looking for Atlanas. He knocks that down to Huiban, and that is just blocked by the defender and out for another corner. Barbilescu with the corner, and that's headed away by Lungu. Barbilescu with another chance to get a ball in. Atlanas with a shot, and it's a good save from Andre again. Chances keep on coming. Barbilescu with the corner towards Buhuescu, and that has gone over everyone and out for a goal kick for Dacia. Barbilescu to Atanas. Back to Barbilescu, the centre midfielder. Looking for Bajanaro, but that is a very badly misplaced pass. And Petra with a chance to play through Radukan. Radukan's through on goal, and it's a good save from Balbara. We arguably should have caught that, but he manages to parry it away from danger. And we've managed to get the, the ball away as well. Atanas with a ball forward to Huiban. Back to the left back, Kalantaru. Atanas has it again. Through ball looking for Huiban. Huiban possibly with a chance now. And it's an excellent finish from Dragos Huiban. His seventh goal of the season on the counter-attack from a Dacia attack. And it was smashed. He just drilled that off the other side of the bar and in to the back of the net. Beautiful ball from Atanas. I thought Buhuescu had got in the way of Huiban here, but he hadn't. Huiban just running past him and then smashing it past the keeper. And we've got a deserved, a much deserved one goal lead at the moment. But there's a highlight straight after the goal. Chiabanu plays it out wide to Palu for Dacia. Through ball looking for Rajikan. Wallace should get there and does and plays it back to the goalkeeper Balbarao, who plays a long ball forward to Buhuescu, nodded down to Huiban. Through ball from him looking for Bajanaro, but Takiuk is there to sweep things up in defence for Dacia. Long ball forward from the Dacia goalkeeper. Wallace wins that in the air though for us. Now Barbilescu to Atanas. Huiban to Buhuescu. He's got tons of space to run into. It's Buhuescu. He's trying to chip the keeper and it's just off the top of the bar. That was a cheeky effort from the striker there. And we are currently second in the table if things stay as they are. Hermannstadt are losing their game to Politenica at Timosuara. But there's danger here with Dacia as Palio has the ball. Good interception. Barbilescu needs to get rid of this. Plays it back to Balbarao and the way he's played some games this season. That could have been a bit of a risk, but he, he didn't make a mistake there. However, Huiban has as he's lost the ball now. And Dacia with a chance to come forward again. Rajikan finds himself through on goal. Rajikan with the shot and he's hit the post. We've gone away with one there as Orion comes away with the ball for us. Throw in. In the attacking third, Barbilescu finds Atanas. Atanas trying to turn his defender. He's on the edge of the box. It's Atanas and it's just over the top of the bar from him. So Claudio Denos is not having the best of times out there. He's on a 6.5 at the moment. Dragos Huiban's on a yellow card up front as well. So they're two people to keep an eye on. In fact, just one because Adrian Popper is going to come on for Claudio Denos. Uh, Denos not having the best of times today. So we'll we'll just give Popper another run out, I think. We'll keep an eye on Huiban as well. Make sure his temper doesn't get the best of him. We might have to bring Emilian Passionel on for him in the second half. As it appears, we have yet another highlight straight from second half kickoff. Atanas is fouled there, or not. It looked like he got tripped up, but Palio is seen to have won the ball fairly, and Dacia have the ball now. Long ball forward from Andre. We should get this comfortably with Orion at right back, and he does. He brings that down nicely. Plays it forward to the centre midfielder Bajanaru. Now Popper, the substitute. Lovely ball forward from him. 
and Buhuescu passes it to Huiban. The keeper came out. Andregos Huiban gets his second goal of the game. Buhuescu with the assist. No idea what the Dacia goalkeeper was thinking of there. That is a, a Balbarau move that Bajanaru with the ball to Popper. Popper with a long ball forward. Thought the keeper was going to get there for a second, but then Bruja Rescue just taps it past the keeper to Huiban, and Huiban, with an open goal to shoot into, gets our second of the game and solidifies us, temporarily at least, in second place. One point behind top of the table, Hermannstadt, who have just gone three goals down in their game as Takiuk comes forward with it for Dacia. Good tackle from Atanas, though. Looking for Huiban. Huiban chests it down nicely, and we could find ourselves 3-0 up here if Huiban does something good here. Ball into the box, and it's blocked from Buhoescu's shot and cleared away. But we still have the ball. Popper, who has, has done quite well since coming on off the bench at halftime, as Orion is advancing forward. Orion, the youngster. Oh, what a finish. Darius Orion with a mazy run forward through the defence, and it is 3-0 now to Stau. Popper picked the ball up from Orion, passed it to Orion, and then he just decides to, to go on a little run. Passed well, through two defenders and then plays it to the far post to the back of the net to make it 3-0. I've just been informed by my assistant that Bobby Lesky is one yellow card away from a suspension. However, he's playing very well out there and he's looking confident. Uh, Bajanaru, he is not looking confident. He's looking composed. He's on a yellow card. He's on 6.8. We're going to take him off. Um, we've got two complacent people on the bench. I'll bring Badea on for him. Um, Badea, of course, recovering from injury. Hopefully this doesn't exacerbate anything that he's still recovering from. As Bobby Lescu has a throw and finds Badea. Now Popper in the box, pulls it across, and that is easily cleared by Stanescu. But Orion is there in defence to head it back to Chalantaru. Now Atanas on the edge of the box. Plays it to Bobby Lescu, the original throw-in taker. Atanas has got the ball again. And again from Kalantaru and Atanas with a shot. And I think the goalkeeper just managed to get fingertips on that to tip that wide. He must have done because it is a corner kick for us. Barbilescu to take it. Wallace is there and it's just over the bar from the Brazilian centre-back. Popper running down this right-hand side. It's headed away his cross by Takiuk. And now Ionita running away with the ball. Finds Pavalash to Petra. And back to Pavalash. It's Stanescu for Dacia. It's just a very patient passing play from the team who are losing 3-0 and down to 10 men as Ionita has the ball again. Surely we can we can win this back. Come on. Ball forward towards Radikan. Radikan chests it down, shoots, and that's just over the bar from him. So there's the full-time whistle, and it is a 3-0 victory for us today. Herman Schatt losing their game, which means that we are closing in on top of the table. And there is confirmation of the league table as it stands. I believe Unirea Slobotia can overtake us depending on what our result was against them i can't actually remember let's have a look it was a nil nil draw so i think it goes to goal difference after um games played against each other and our goal difference is slightly better than theirs currently so we should be pretty solid in second place we are currently eight points clear of seventh place which is of course the the main concern at the moment seventh place do have five games left to play though so it's still all to play for concordia chiajna also losing their game who were above us as well before the start of play today so looking ahead to the next episode and i'm not going to give a time scale of when i'm going to be back um we there's, there's a huge gap i'm just noticing here so we've got one more game before the new year, which is against FC Brasov, who are currently 6th on the 4th of December. Then we've got the rest of December off, all of January off, pretty much all of February off. And then we come back at the very end of February for a game against Salimbar. And then in March, where we have two weeks off and then we play Politanica Timosawara. Then we have two weeks off again and we play Repensia Timosawara. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if it gets a bit tight between us making it to the top six playoff or whatever you want to call it, where the league splits, I will come back for one or both of these games. If it looks like we're, we're pretty secure in the top six, I'll not come back until we make it to, I really need to, to work out what the wording is for this, until we make it to the champions playoff. So yeah, that that's, that's when we'll be back for the next episode. But that is it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel to get all my content when it comes out. Hit the notification bell to stay notified and I'll see you next time.